Hi, this is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's just around 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, November 13th, uh, coming on this afternoon with the latest on our new system that we've uh, started advisories on here in the Caribbean Sea, potential tropical cyclone 19. Right now, it's a broad area of low pressure. You can see all the shower and thunderstorm activity that's uh, blown up around it today. Currently, the broad center of low pressure is a little less than 300 miles to the east of the Nicaragua-Honduras border here on the, uh, in, in Central America. The the system, our best indications are, is moving off to the west at about six miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds right now are around 30 miles per hour. So uh, we are expecting the system to go on and become a tropical storm overnight, and then it could steadily or even rapidly strengthen over the warm waters here of the uh, Western Caribbean Sea and be at or near hurricane intensity as it approaches the uh, coast of Central America over the next several days. Now you can see all the forecast points clustered together here. So right now we're at Wednesday afternoon. This is gonna get us to Thursday afternoon. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the system is going to slow down and basically stall out near or right offshore of the coast of Honduras uh, all the way through the weekend. And so there's going to be some big uh, uh, uncertainty that's going to play out here over the next several days. If the center stays offshore, a little farther offshore, it could be stronger. We're uh, expecting it to be at or near hurricane strength during this time. And for that reason, there is now a hurricane watch that's been issued for the coast of Honduras from Punta Castilla eastward to the Nicaragua-Honduras border. Tropical storm watch for the northeastern coast of Nicaragua. That hurricane watch means hurricane conditions are possible within that watch area within the next 48 hours with tropical storm conditions possible by late Thursday. Now, however, if the center goes a little farther inland, it could weaken, uh, but it's still going to be a huge rainfall threat, and that is going to be the biggest hazard here that's going to play out over Central America over the next several, several days. The potential for catastrophic life-threatening flash flooding and rainfall is largely the biggest hazard in terms of fatalities here across Central America when it comes to tropical storms and hurricanes. If we look at the rainfall forecast across portions of northern Honduras, we're expecting widespread rainfall totals of 10 to 20 inches in this red area. We could see isolated locations get as much as 30 inches of rainfall. That's like two and a half feet of rain over the next several days. Uh, and that could lead to potentially catastrophic flash flooding and landslides, especially along the northern coast of Honduras. But there's a broader risk of heavy rainfall across much of the rest of Central America, including uh, portions of northern Nicaragua, uh, eastern Guatemala, Belize, the remainder of Honduras, where we're expecting widespread rainfall totals of 5 to 10 inches, isolated amounts as high as 15 inches that could also cause some significant flooding issues in those areas. Now, if we zoom out and look at the longer range track forecast, well, again, we're expecting <laughs> the system again to become a tropical storm and then meander near or just offshore of the coast of northern uh, northern coast of Honduras uh, all the way through the weekend and we get out to um, the Monday time frame we uh, expect the center to be somewhere in the vicinity of the Yucatan Peninsula perhaps over Belize uh, perhaps over the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico perhaps offshore so uh, again the uncertainty here and how much land interaction is going to occur will determine how strong the system is here right now we're expecting it to be a tr strong tropical storm but a hurricane certainly not out of the question if the system remains inland it could be weaker if it stays offshore it could be stronger so there's a lot of uncertainty that's going to come into play as to exactly what those impacts are going to look like for the Yucatan Peninsula and then even more uncertainty as we go out farther into next week for any potential longer term impacts to the state of Florida and Cuba in the eastern Gulf of Mexico so let's wrap up with the key messages here for potential tropical cyclone 19 on this Wednesday afternoon through early next week heavy rainfall will cause significant life-threatening potentially catastrophic flash flooding and landslides across portions of Central America, particularly northern Honduras, Belize, El Salvador, eastern Guatemala, and western Nicaragua. Uh, the disturbance is forecast to be near hurricane strength when it moves near the eastern coast of Honduras and northeastern Nicaragua Friday and Saturday, and hurricane and tropical storm conditions are possible in those areas where those watches have been issued this afternoon. The system is forecast to approach Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico at or near hurricane strength early next week, and so there is a risk of dangerous storm surge, damaging winds in those areas. So residents in the Yucatan Peninsula should monitor updates to the forecast, make sure they have their hurricane plan in place. Looking farther downstream, it's much too soon to determine what impacts this system could eventually bring to portions of the eastern Gulf of Mexico, including Florida, the Florida Keys, and Cuba during the middle portion of next week. But residents in these areas should regularly monitor updates to the forecast. So keep coming back here to the National Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov for the latest on this system throughout the next several days. For those of you in Central America, you want to uh, get more information from your local government and your local National Meteorological Service. And of course, here in the United States, you can get more information on your local weather from your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. We'll be back with more updates on this system through the next several days. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.